We all have our favorite caffeine products. Yours might be a thick, foamy espresso or a strong cup of Earl Grey tea or even an energy drink. Personally, I like a good cup of black coffee made with a French press. But one way or another, most people feel like they need caffeine on a daily basis. An estimated 80% of American adults consume caffeine in one form or another every day. Caffeine's most recognizable effect is usually an increase in alertness and wakefulness. It also creates a short-term elevation in your blood pressure, which can make it difficult to achieve or maintain sleep. Most importantly, caffeine blocks adenosine, that neurochemical that increases in the body throughout the day, heading to sleepiness. By blocking adenosine, we reduce the body's ability to become sleepy. Caffeine also increases our motivation neurotransmitter, dopamine. Dopamine is a neurochemical that activates the pleasure centers of the brain. Caffeine increases dopamine similar to the way that amphetamines do. This increases alertness and also may be part of what makes caffeine so habit-forming. One of the big ways that caffeine disrupts your natural sleep cycle is by decreasing melatonin. For those of you who don't know, remember melatonin is that sleep hormone. It's kind of like the key that starts the engine for sleep. It's not the only thing that you need, but it's one of the most important hormones and you can't start sleep without it. It might surprise you to hear, but caffeine has an even stronger influence on melatonin suppression than bright light. Caffeine also hangs in on our system for a really long time. Did you know it takes almost eight hours for the concentration of caffeine floating around in our bodies to be reduced by half? So how much caffeine is too much caffeine? When considering how much caffeine is too much, we've got to consider that we don't all respond to caffeine exactly the same way. Some of us are more sensitive than others. For healthy adults, the FDA recommends no more than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. This feels like a lot of caffeine to me though. That's roughly four six ounce cups of coffee. The big thing to remember about caffeine is that small doses at multiple intervals will give you the biggest bang for your buck. So consider a small cup of coffee about 90 minutes after you wake up for your first dose. Then look for a second one around 11.30 if needed and I also recommend that you stop consuming caffeine before about 2 p.m. since it hangs out in our body so long. But do yourself a favor, don't try to go cold turkey though. Reducing caffeine intake slowly helps reduce the withdrawal effects that you might experience. With that said, my goal for you in this course is not to need caffeine. If your sleep is dialed in, then you really shouldn't rely on caffeine to wake you up in the mornings. A sign of restorative healthy sleep is to wake up five minutes before your alarm with a clear head ready to tackle the world.